Hey guys and gals, welcome to this week's pre-foreclosure daily grind tip of the week. Chris the Drummer Bowls, Bob La Chance, hopefully everyone had a fantastic week. Today we're going to go over mortgage insurance, mm -hmm. which uh, a lot of you guys heard it as MI, PMI, but it's mortgage insurance. And we're going to talk in particular about one company, and we're going to get into the, the, the goods, bads, and the difference of how it's affecting our short sale world right now. Mm -hmm. And it is affecting our short sale world because a lot of the properties that we're working on right now actually have mortgage insurance um, with the first mortgage. So we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, but anyway, just so you guys know, mortgage insurance typically insures anywhere from 20 to 30% of that first mortgage. So for example, and I know a lot of you heard it was 20%, but this particular company we're talking about takes care of anywhere from 0 to 30% of the first mortgage insurance. Uh, we're talking right now about MGIC. Mm -hmm. okay? And Chris, you want to talk a little bit about how it affects our short sale process right now? Well, basically, uh, the way the mortgage insurance, like Bob said, they insure the top 20 or 30%. That's because most lenders are going to would otherwise require at least a 20% down payment. However, what mortgage insurance does is it, it allows the buyer to buy the house with less than uh, a 20% down payment because essentially they take care of the rest of it so they, the lender can you know write the loan. So they insure the lender of giving pretty much more of a risky loan. Exactly. So exactly. Right. Offsets their risk a little bit. But Chris, go over how when we submit our short sale offer, when the, the channels it goes through when... Mm -hmm. Uh, a first mortgage actually has MI insurance on it. Right. So, so given that, given that the top twenty or thirty percent of the loan is being covered by mortgage insurance, that means that they are one of the parties that is um, losing or gaining money, depending on what the offer is and depending on other you know conditions of the approval. So in other words, uh, when you go to do a short sale, keep in mind that you're going to need, and we had a few questions about this this past week, you're going to need approval not only from management at the servicer, be Bank of America, Chase, whoever it could be, but the investor that owns that loan, you know, could be government, Fannie Freddie, could be, uh, you know, a small, a private, more private company, could be hedge fund, whatever, could be hedge fund, whatever, and you're going to need to get uh, approval from the PMI company, such as what we're talking about, you know, today, uh, MGIC. And so... Any one of those three parties can basically say everything looks good or we want an, an additional condition in the approval. So in essence, you submit your short sale package. It goes to the servicer, which let's talk about, I don't know, Bank of America. They're yeah. servicing it. They now have to review your short sale offer. Then they have to go to the investor who actually owns that money. Mm -hmm. It could be Bank of America. It could be Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA a hedge fund, whoever it is, but they have to go to them and say, okay, does it does this offer fit within your guidelines that you need to net in your pocket? Then, if it has mortgage insurance, they also have to go from there to mortgage insurance company and say, okay, does it fit within your guidelines? Now, this is where we're going to come into play with what we're going to talk about right now. And this has to do with how much mortgage insurance, the MGIC company will pay a second lien holder and will allow the first mortgage to pay the second lien holder. That's where it gets that's where it gets tricky. And I have a printout here, got an email from an actual loss mitigator. It says here's the guideline on the second mortgage. I have no room to negotiate. The second cannot comply, I need to deny. So here are the guidelines. This is an email from an actual loss mitigator that's stating that it has MI insurance, and the MI insurance will only agree to pay a certain amount. And here it is. If the second mortgage, if the first mortgage has mortgage insurance, but if the second mortgage is between $1,000 and $25,000, uh, MGIC will only agree to pay $500 to that second mortgage. Okay. So what does that mean? we got to find the money somewhere else. Okay? Between if the second mortgage now is twenty between twenty five thousand dollars to seventy five thousand dollars. This is principal balance on the second. This is, this is what these numbers are. Good point. Are. <laughs> principal balance. They will only give the second mortgage one thousand dollars. Let's keep going further. First, uh, seventy between seventy five thousand dollars and one hundred fifty thousand dollars. They'll only give them two thousand dollars. Now I don't know what percent that is, but that's like chicken feed. 
and that's percentage. Like pennies on the dollar. Yeah, and if it's greater uh, than 150 grand, MGIC is very, very generous. They'll only give them three grand. <laughs> So just know when you have a short sale up front, find out if it has mortgage insurance, okay? Um, if it has mortgage insurance and a second mortgage, find out who the insurance company is so you can cut through all the bull crap right away. And you'll know right away that you're going to have to find that extra money to go to a second mortgage right away because they'll only, uh, and the insurance company will only cover a certain amount. Right, right, so exactly. That's pretty key, especially when first mortgage is insured by or the investor on it is Freddie Mac, which will only give three grand to a second mortgage. Mm -hmm. So if you have a higher than thousand uh, dollar mortgage, you're kind of screwed on that one. But anyway, um, with that said, what else we got, Chris? That was good stuff right there. It's good stuff. It's um, you know basically just uh, I think the 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 other again to clarify, you know we had a lot of people who said you know is PMI are there games like the you know I. I had a, I thought I had approval, and then the last minute PMI came back and and said they wanted something else. Or MI else. PMI is an actual company, so MI. MI, yeah, right. Basically, Don't mean to interrupt you there. Chris, oh, so they came back. They came back basically, and they they wanted a prom note at the last minute. Um, just know, you know, again, it, the, these aren't games being played. What's happening here is that, you know, the the file goes from the servicing company to the investor to PMI or MI, and then vice versa, and then back again, and. It's off, you know, it happens a lot where maybe the MI company is going to want to take another look at the file because they want to review again the seller's you know, financial situation, how much they're making, things like that. And um, Just Google MGIC, too, right. insurance, or insure, and you'll, you'll get some good information. Right. It. But it, just know that it's, it's, these aren't games. It's, it's possible and, and likely, and it does happen you know, from time to time that uh, whoever the MI company is, they'll come in at the last minute with another condition for the approval, so. Right, just know it up front, it's part of the game. Just got to know expectation. your game. Yeah, you got to know your game. Also, just want to give a, a shout out to Short Sale Daily News. If you guys haven't uh, checked it out, it's got a ton, ton, ton of information on the short sale world. All videos, it's got a ton of articles on a daily basis on what's new, what's changing, everything. So check it out, shortsaledailynews.com. But anyway, pre-foreclosure daily grind, pre-foreclosure tip of the week. Chris the Drummer Bowes, Bob Chance, getting back to you again. This week's pre-foreclosure tip of the week.